Hey everyone, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving day for all of you guys. So I'm throwing this late video regarding of the Wednesday Night War. So we're going to see who actually won this particular one, or should I say, who I think had the best show. So let's talk about that on this episode of Deleted WrestleZone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling from AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, many matches, promotions, wrestlers, and championships. I am your host Jay right here. Now, before I start do, uh, start talking, um, uh, one of you guys a heads up. So far, we don't have the results of the ratings for this week's Wednesday Night War due because of Thanksgiving. Uh, it's already been notified that it will happen on Monday. So I might throw in a spe uh, an episode on that day. Uh, just be patient. I'll reveal it as soon as possible. But first, let's talk about this uh, both shows and which one I think had the better show of the night or however it goes. Let's start with AEW. Uh, first match of the night was Hangman Page versus Silver uh, John Silver. Now, to me, I'm not sure what of the significance of it but however i think they're giving a, a a really good story with the dark order uh, probably extending an olive branch with hangman if you guys saw being the elite um when john silver was still down losing to orange cassidy if you recall months prior to that uh dark order were saying f hangman page so they were doing that many times over and hangman got involved and he got into it but the match was okay, good. I have to say, it was like, okay, it was good. But the way it ended, like in the promo, after Hangman beat John Silver, John, uh, Evil Uno made a, a really interesting way of putting the story together. He's saying that people have called us a, co a cult. We're not a cult. The elite, on the other hand, you want it out, but they can't bring it. That is a cult. So basically, they're trying to twist things around for Hangman. But they did stand it in Olive Branch to him saying that if you need real friends, we're right there. So basically, it's still unclear because we still haven't seen um, Brody Lee. We do know he was injured ever since he had that match with Cody for the dog collar match for the TNT title. But we'll just wait and see where they're going to go. Now, we had an interview with Kenny Omega talking about how He's the cleaner, the best bout machine, and all this, this and that. So later, it, it, he was like trying to determine more about what about everything else. So he's be, trying to give out that promo, but I feel like he wasn't, he wasn't being the same cleaner that we supposed to be. But we're, we're getting to that, you know, as soon as possible. But next up, we had a little video package with Darby Allen. Um, he always does these video packages. Where he just tries to make sense of it, but it, you know how that is. Then the next match we had uh, Lee Johnson, who was a member of the Nightmare Family, facing off against Team Taz' newest recruit, Will Hobbs, who now goes by uh, Powers House Hobbs. And the match was all right. It was more like a squash match, in my opinion. So Will uh, Powerhouse Hobbs won. But the great thing, the best part was the promo at the end of the match where. Taz tells Will Hobbs to go now. He cuts out like this amazing promo where he's telling how he felt that the FTW is not being recognizable as a prestige title. Basically, it has nothing to do with AEW. So they kept cutting the mic off, cutting the mic off, and then Cody comes out like saying, "You know, I'll take it up the flagpole." So basically, he wants to give him a a chance to talk, but Taz is not into politics, so he had it with this crap. He wants answers. That he wants the, the FTW to be re well recognized. But however, Cody kind of went 
um, not over the line, but more like try to get into under his skin, telling him, okay, why is your son tra uh, training with me instead of not with you? And he, that kind of like went over the line. And then Taz put Cody in a, a Taz submission. And here comes the members of the Nightmare family, Austin and Billy and the Natural Nightmares to come and save him. Then you see Taz's son right there walking out with him with the T with the FTW title. So I think they're introducing a pretty good uh, storyline feud where Taz is sick and tired of Cody being the guy who claims he's the prince of pro wrestling, that he's putting people down and all of that, you know? So that's what they're se is seeing that. Uh, but it was pretty good how they actually went the promo. I think we're going to see another feud with Team Taz and... Uh, the Nightmare Family. Next up we have is an interview with Eddie Kingston. Like he's talking about his uh, involvement. About seeing his former best friend Penta facing off. Penta turning his back on him. But siding with Pac and Ray Phoenix. Taking on the Butcher and the Blade. But however he was interrupted by a familiar face. And I'm talking about our AEW world champion. John Moxley. Now Moxley looks at him, but Eddie kind of was chill, like saying, "Bro, it wasn't me, but you know who it is." Now we can say Mox, Eddie Kingston, he's predictable. He would do whatever it takes to get the attention, but he does have a fantastic point. Basically, who else could have attacked him? So basically, that's the mystery. So we'll get to that. The next match we have is Top Flight versus the Hybrid Two. Now. If you recall a week ago, Top Flight made their AEW debut on AEW Dynamite against the Bucks in a really good match, but they lost. They came up short. But however, the Hybrid 2 attacked them for no apparent reason. The Hybrid 2 is sick and tired of them being overlooked, that they are not getting getting the chances that they want. And that kind of went into the feud between both uh, the Bucks and the Hybrid 2. But however, uh, during AEW Dark... Uh, Top Flight got their payback against the Hybrid 2, and it was set up for this past Wednesday's uh, Dynamite. It was a really good match, but however, they came up short, uh, Top Flight. But however, they were still continuing to beat them. Here comes the Bucks to save the day. So we may see maybe Hybrid 2 be one of those teams that will come across to get a chance of the AEW well, World Tag Team titles. That's something that we know it could happen because they have the best tag team division outside of WWE. And then we have Vicky Guerrero with the video package that she put out. As you know, she's been criticizing Brandy Rhodes, saying why you have these women like Red Velvet, Serena Deeb, and um, Big Swole on your side, believing that they are siding with someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And basically, she made these remarks and saying that all of this. So basically, we're seeing a, a a few with the women who who should who feel like okay, who can make bigger stars? Like Vicky, we know she has Nala Rose. I don't know about Jade Cargrill, who we seen recently, who took out Brandy a week ago. But we'll see what they're gonna go with that in, at some point. Then we have FTR, who finally spoke out after since Full Gear. They are determined to regain the AEW World Tag Team titles. Now, we do know they do have a rematch clause, but the real question is, when is that going to happen? But they did uh, talk about how they need to be champions again and all this other that. So they still will get those titles back. So that's one of the key things we had to pay attention during the entire time. So we're going to follow up on that when we get more of it. Next up we have is S uh well oh yeah SCU Frank uh Frank Kazarian and Christopher Daniels facing off against Jake Hager and Chris Jericho of the Inner Circle. But in tow we got the inner circle members with them. Uh it was like a pretty good strong match where you see a couple of veterans and and facing off against each other. But however, you don't count out the other members of the inner circle, you know for a fact that they're going to interfere. MJF whacked uh, Daniels with the diamond ring that he got from that match last year 
which is going to come back again on this upcoming Wednesday. But however, when the match was over, thanks to Hager picking up the victory to his for his team, uh, Kazarian whacked uh, MJF. They were tr they beat up Kazarian and Daniels. But here comes Scorpio Sky with the chair to come for the save. All of this and that. So basically, we got another feud that's going to be popping up out in the woodworks on this one. Next thing we have is Kip, and Sabian, and Mero unveiling their brand new game system or what it was. But however, their unveilment was spoiled by, ru ruined by Orange Cassidy. It was, I thought it was a really good uh, way to, to piss them off. But however, they were ambushed by both best friend Chuck Taylor and uh, Trent. But, yeah, and not to mention, Miro grabbed the cameraman and tells him, to get out of my way, and, he, and then you just don't see what happens after that. Now we get to the contract signing, where we see Kenny Omega coming out of his entrance like he always does, but out of nowhere, you see a shadow right behind him, and that is none other than Moxley. So basically, Moxley beat him up. If, the thing is, Eddie Kingston was no fool. He knows for a fact, Okay, you may think it's me, but it's not me. So it, he come up with this interesting promo when he took out Kenny, where he's saying you claim that you're the cleaner, but you would never pull out the potential of the cleaner. So basically, that's one of the things that we're seeing. We need to see the cleaner that we remember back in New Japan. That is something that Moxley wants to see. You know, he's not looking for him to soften up on him. That's one of the, the key things that we got to pay attention when this match comes up this coming Wednesday. Now, as you know what happened uh, with Inner Circle when Kazarian actually was sucker punched um, MJF, Jericho said that they had no right to put his, his hands on MJF. So he booked himself in a match against Kazarian one-on-one, -on -one, telling him he's going to be famous. So that's going to happen this Wednesday. So it's going to be Chris Jericho versus Kazarian. Uh, that's going to be the first time ever we see those two face off. Next up we have is the AEW World Women's World Championship between Dark Order members, member uh, Anna J, along with Tay Conti versus Hikaru Shida. Now, I know some of you are saying, uh, is she going to drop the belt? A part of me did speculate that there's no way they're going to have Shida drop the belt. Not because I say so. I feel like maybe they want to give a much stronger uh, person to be champion, which is okay. You have to legitimize because the thing is, Shido, in my opinion, should have been the first AEW Women's Champion because she seems like the strongest type. No disrespect to Rio, but I feel she should have been that person from the very beginning. But she is now, and I think many fans would rather see her as the champion. But it was a good match. You know, like Anna Jay told her that she is not the same person that she remembered the last time they faced off. Now since when the Dark Order, she has them on their side. But the match was great. Even Tay did not want to give Anna Jay the, the chair, but however, it didn't go her way. Uh, it was Hikaru Shida that won the match. But however, post-match, we just saw the return of Abaddon. And now she just made her, her target for the AEW Women's World Championship, she wants a title shot. Now, this is going to be an interesting feud. I know we were expecting Tay Conti and Abaddon to face in dark, but Abaddon got injured or something, like, from what I understand. So I say this is a good character to bring out, you know, because we need new characters. But do I think that Abaddon could beat her for a title, that she might, that Sheeta might drop it? I don't think so. I feel like. We need a much stronger character to play it, to take uh, to dethrone Sheeta. I think that's one of the key things. I mean, Abaddon will be a good character to put um, to put recognition into this. Because it wasn't the first time Sheeta and Abaddon face off against each other. But that's the way I remembered. So let's keep moving on. As you know, Matt Hardy has announced he's going to be in that di uh, battle royal for the Diamond Ring. So it's already been cleared that's gonna the we have Orange Cassidy is gonna be in it along with Kip Sabian and Mero, and I'm excited for that the Diamond Ring. 
But the next thing we see is a mess. Is Team Taz, how Ricky Stark saying that Cody crossed the line is disrespectful. What he said about his son, and that they're going to make him pay for what he's done. That that they're going to be at the top of the of the food chain. That sort of thing. So I think, but we do know they're gonna uh, Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs will face Cody and Darby Allen this coming Wednesday, which is gonna be a good match to watch. Now we get to the main event. Uh, we had the Butcher and the Blade along with Kingston and the Bunny facing off against two thirds of Death Triangle, Ray Phoenix and Pac, along with Penta in tow. This match was pretty good. I have to say it was good. Uh, because, you know, we just saw, okay, the family divided now. We saw the Lucha Brothers sided with Pac reforming the Death Triangle. I feel like this is one of those good things that we're going to see with Death Triangle. I think we expected more of them prior before the pandemic. But now that they're back, it's like, okay, now we're expecting where we left off. But the one thing it was, the way it ended is Eddie Kingston interfere as always to ensure the Butcher and the Blade win. But later, the beatdown happened. However, here comes Lance Archer. And I have to say, it, it's it's like he's turning babyface or whatever. But I think we could see an alliance between both Archer and Death Triangle facing off against guys like the Butcher and the Blade and Eddie Kings and the rest of the Familia. But I, I think I know where this is going. As you recall, back in All In for the casino ladder match that they had, uh, Kings... The battle royal or something, Kingston claimed that he never actually law was overthrown was thrown out of the ring since he was in the top. But Lance Archer's like saying, "Whatever, I threw you out, I beat you." So that basically that's the whole point. I think they're gonna give this feud where Lance Archer's like, "Ah, shut up, I beat you. What are you talking about?" So that's how the whole thing ends. But I can't wait to see what's gonna happen this coming Wednesday. So I think that's it for AW Dynamite. Let's jump in with NXT. Okay, NXT. It started out with the first match where we had uh, Candice LeRae along with Indy Hartwell versus Ember Moon. Now, if you recall a week ago, it was Candice LeRae and, um, Ember, um, and Indy Hartwell that attacked Ember Moon and Tony Storm. No, what? I don't remember that. I don't think that's what happened. Yeah, but anyway, this is one of those moments where you see, okay, Candice is being serious about being team captain, who's facing off Shotzi Blackheart. It was a good match until um, Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai showed up to give a helping hand. But the best part that happened, it was kind of really interesting, is where Indy Hartwell took a bullet for Candice while Ember Moon applied the um the eclipse on her but except it didn't go her way ember moon lost lost the match thanks to the interference but when you thought that ember moon was like about to start a fight here comes tony storm to back her up but little did we know she turned heel turned her back on ember moon and they just beat her up sensibly so basically she is now on team laray the way i see it because they already showed her, showed uh, Raquel and Dakota they're in. So that's going to be interesting. Now, as you know, uh, Legato the Fantasma has been at the top of its game. However, they they kept uh, talking who they beaten, like uh, Adonis, uh, Shante the Adonis, Swerve, and now Santos is not impressed with Colt Stallion. But however, he thinks that no one can beat him. But there is one person that's going to have an issue with him. And he's across the Atlantic. Trust me, we're going to get that match. I know we are. Because you never bet against an Irish ace. I know I wouldn't. So anyway, now we confirm that Team Larray is consistent of, of Candice, Dakota, and Raquel. Let's jump into the Undisputed Era promo. As you know, these guys have been on multiple war games before. But uh, Adam Cole Dutt made one interesting point. 
he believes that he says that it was true. Undisputed Era is undefeated in trying when winning the Advantage uh, matches. If you guys don't know what it is, there's always the numbers gains. Basically, when one person comes in and the next, and then here comes the other the other team, the first like number three come in, uh, supporting of number one. That's the advantage. That's something that Undisputed Era has uh, been good at. But however, the match was set with between Pete Dunne, but originally no one knows for sure who was going to face Pete Dunne until Kyle O'Reilly volunteered himself saying that he w wants some payback to Pete, uh, Pete Dunne for what he did a couple weeks ago, whacking him with the chair. So that is something we are expecting. So that's the main event coming up. Now, the next match we had is Timothy Thatcher and Kushida. Now, this was a good match. I'm not going to lie because this is something I did not expect because, A, what I liked about this match is more of a tactical type of match. You know, Timothy Thatcher, he's a very submission uh, catch wrestler type. Kushida, he adapts to anything that comes in his way. And that's one of the things that I liked about Kushida. But however, Tommaso Ciampa grabbed the chair and he was right there. But it did caught. But and one thing you didn't notice, Kushida found the weakness on Timothy Thatcher, got to his left arm, so he was using that to find a way to apply a big submission on him. However, uh, Thatcher always gets out, but he got distracted thanks to Tommaso, who got up from his chair, got in his face, and and ended with Kushida winning. So basically, he's getting the attention now with Thatcher. So Tommaso Ciampa is picking a fight with Thatcher. I have to say, book the match for War Games, please. I would love to see that. Next up, we have is the KO Show. Basically, um, as you all know, Kevin Owens is the guest commentator. Um... Uh, Wade Barrett it, uh, wasn't going to be there. So he had his guest, uh, Leon Ruff, talking about him, giving him a, a bit of an advice. And then he did that whole, here comes this one person, one, two, three, you know, that sort of thing. Here comes Gargano, who's claiming that he's a joke. That top belongs to him. And then here comes Damon Priest. You know, he has no beef with Leon Ruff, but he wants that title too. But however, general manager Breland Rigo showed up and he set up a triple threat match for the North American Championship at War Games. And his final words, playa. Yeah, so basically he pulled a Teddy Long right here. I have to say that was pretty good. I, I just laughed, you know, when he said it. So that makes me very, very happy to hear that. Now, um... As you know that we have the war games coming up, we still don't know who Shotzi Blackheart's teammate team is going to be for war games. That is still undetermined. So we just got to wait and see. Next match we have is Cameron Grimes versus Jake Atlas. And I wasn't too much sold on this match because I kind of figured um, Cameron Grimes was going to win this one. But however... It's not even over between him and, and Dexter Loomis. Last time he faced him, he ran away. So basically, uh, Dexter Loomis kind of embarrassed him with that whole Haunted House of Terror, of horror match that they were in back in Halloween Havoc. And I thought it, he was trying to get in his head, but he requested a match for them, which is a strap match. He doesn't want to do it, but Regal... <sighs> Excuse me. He actually said he has to be in the match regardless because he is he's running away like the, like a scared little girl. So it's going to happen at War Games. So it's already been set up for this. Now, ever since what happened a week ago with Rhea Ripley losing, the NXT, losing to Io Shirai to obtain the NXT Women's Championship, we all thought the same thing. Due to speculations because we expect her to go to the main roster, either Raw or SmackDown. 
But she shot up the rumors saying that's not true. That she is still staying in NXT. She still wants to get a, a shot of the title. But however, she did state it that she's not friends with Io Shirai, but she respects her. So that's one of the things that comes out. But however, her little promo was cut short thanks to the arrival of Team Larray. Candace is sick and tired of hearing Larray uh, Ripley talk. So it became a numbers advantage between Team Larray and Ray Ripley in, in that form. But later it was revealed why Larray took out Io Shirai, Ray Ripley, and Amber Moon. She believed in her mind that these are the women that may possibly join Shotzi Blackheart. Now, that is the possibility, but however, what makes her so certain that these are the women that would join her? There's other plenty of women, too. You got Kaden Carter, Katie Cantazaro. Uh, you know, who else is there? But however, when Candace Ray was leaving to take Indy Hartwell to the hospital, Johnny was there saying he will obtain the North American Championship. But the strange thing is, we just saw another ghost face. Yeah, another ghost face. Last time we saw this, it was with Indy Hartwell. And now, it's another one. Now, I believe, I don't know if you guys will believe this. I think maybe it's Austin Theory. Somehow Johnny Gargano got into him, you know, telling him that you have to follow my way. I don't know. But we just got to wait and see when we get there. Now, these last couple weeks regarding... Boa and Zia Lee. Lee has been on a lose. Zia has been on a losing streak. All of a sudden, Boa Lee received a visit from this guy, whoever he was. They took Zia Lee and Boa to some place meeting a master. I don't know what that was, but it kind of feels like one of those dark Chinese magic stuff. I don't know, but I'm kind of like. Okay, not much is being told, but hopefully it makes more sense the more it comes. I, I don't know. That's something I'm expecting. Now, we were first expecting Everize to be in a tag team match, but they were attacked by grizzled young veterans who we haven't seen since the start of the, sp of the pandemic. And... Um, they just put the entire locker room on notice, every tag team. So I wouldn't be surprised that somewhere down the line that they will make a play for the NXT Tag Team Championship that is currently obtained by Orny Lorcan and Danny Birch. So that I can expect. <sighs> anyway, let's jump into the main event, which is the War Games Ladder Match Advantage. This was a brutal physical match. I was like, dang. You don't know what to expect on this one. But as you know, uh, Undisputed Era are undefeated in this. But things did not go exactly according to plan for Undisputed Era. Kyle O'Reilly had everything close in hand. But this unknown mass figure showed up and attacked him. Making sure that Pete Dunne won. And this allowed for... Pat McAfee and his team to win the match. But the real question is, who is this mass figure? Now, a part of me wants to say it's Pat McAfee because A, he wants to prove Undisputed Era, you're done. It's over. Let We are the ones taking over. Like, they think they're the top uh, team that is going to run the show. Not to mention they were trying to force Finn Balor to hand over the NXT championship even though he hasn't won it. So, that's what's happened. So, Pat McAfee and his team are the ones with the briefcase match. With the with the advantage. So, we're just going to see what's going to happen in War Games soon enough when it happens. So, I think that's it with NXT. So, let's talk about my final thoughts of this, of this event.
Okay, what are my thoughts on this? I have to say there were some good matches and good storylines. But I feel that the better storylines, the better promos, and the matches came from AEW. I mean, look, the thing with Taz was pretty good. It, it showed like, okay, Taz saying, I want to take things serious. But don't forget, Cody is good in building stories. If you guys recall what happened in the first pay-per-view they ever done, Double or Nothing, that kind of spoke itself right there. And that's what Cody is all about. And I feel that he could bring a good story into this with the whole thing with Taz. And I'm looking forward to it. And much what I like about this is also that match with Hikaru Shida and Anna Jay. Because we've always been fascinated with Shida and, and her her ability to, to win matches. Try to be undefeated. All of this and that. But of course she had to face against someone she's familiarized. Anna Jay who is trying to make the Dark Order proud. But um, the whole thing with Abaddon, I have to say, I don't see that she could beat Sheeta. I think they might go a little longer with her. But we just got to wait and see where they go. I feel that's what AEW has had better stories, better everything. Not to take away NXT, I feel they did have a good show. But certain things kind of... um. To me, I feel like they, they, there were certain things like, for example, the whole thing with Candice LeRae attacking Ember Moon, where Ripley Io Shirai, I feel like, okay, why take them out? You could have had other people. To me, I felt like, okay, Candice LeRae would demand who was in her team. But attacking those who potentially could be in her team, that is something kind of like, okay, you may never know if she's going to pick them. What makes you so certain she'll take Rhea Ripley and uh, Io Shirai? Or Ember Moon. That's one of the things that kind of. Gets me thinking of that. I mean which is. Nothing wrong with it. But it is what it is. And all that. But I feel the edge. For this Wednesday. Is AEW Dynamite. So that's how I feel. So there it is. But I will re reveal the results. Uh, soon enough. Once it comes out. Uh, next episode you guys are going to see right now, is, later on, is going to be um, MLW, NXT UK, 205 Live, and New Japan Strong, The Road to Death, the Nation. And then after that, the New Japan stuff. I'm going to put four days of those in one episode. And I know we got the Dragon Gate coming up soon. So I think that's it for now. hope you guys enjoy this episode. Leave a comment. Uh, click the like button. Subscribe. So I must bid all of you guys adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.